Rolling, first of all, have you managed to come off clout nine after Sunday's drama? Yeah, no, it's a awesome uh, feeling, all this awesome achievement, but uh, it was a great game. Uh, both games were, the both games are really solid. Um, obviously, great to get the win, but it's sort of, uh, yeah, sort of. We've got to Wembley now, but we don't want to go. We want to go down there and have a good account of ourselves, and it's all focus is obviously the next two weeks. But then, um, I'm playing well at Wembley. That's the key. Mm-hmm. We'll get on to Cass later, coming up on Friday night. But for you, having missed out on two finals previously with Rovers, how much did it mean on a personal level to you to get there at the third time of asking? Yeah, personally, it's obviously uh, uh, awesome. It's definitely something over here I wanted to do. I've been lucky enough to play at Old Trafford and win at Old Trafford. So um, to play at Wembley will be outstanding. And obviously, as I said, it's it's going all, all about going down there to get the win. Uh, I heard from Elliot Minchella on Monday saying that the celebrations were reduced to just a, a quiet beer in the dressing room and basically the group saying the job's not, not done yet. How much does that speak about the determination that this team has got to get over the line in this competition yeah for sure yeah definitely as i said it was a awesome achievement awesome game awesome feeling amongst the group but uh yeah the key is definitely um performing well over the next two weeks and then uh playing well at wembley we're not going down there i guess obviously previously the club went down and, and uh didn't play quite so well so we're definitely going down there to uh play well and and yeah do our best a word that was mentioned quite a lot by some of your teammates post-match, Kane Lynette, Sean Kenny Dow, was adversity. And I mean, you have to go back to the warm-up and Ryan Hall pulling out just beforehand. How how much, do, again, how much does it speak volumes about this team that you've had to overcome so many obstacles to get to this point in the season? Yeah, uh, obviously, Ryan pulling out um, in warm-up was definitely not ideal. He's unbelievable he's playing so well at the moment he uh gets our sets going so uh it was a big loss but yeah as i said it's, a, it's an awesome group we've got here uh boys just get on with it we're all like very close knit and it's sort of like obviously that happened but that we sort of use it use it to our advantage i guess and sort of did it did it for ryan and made sure that we got the win how selfless an act was that from ryan it sounds like he was the one that made that decision that he wasn't quite right for that game yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, Ryan's a very unique person. He's an awesome person, but uh, he made the call. And uh, yeah, it's, so it's it's a big call to make. You sort of go into games sometimes and you feel like you're not 100% and you're in the warm-up going, can I play, can't I play? And for him to decide that it wasn't right was a big call. And um, But yeah, hopefully he can, he can make it to Wembley. Uh, and more heroics from Br- Brad Schneider. How delighted are you with how quickly he settled in in the last two weeks? Yeah, no, unbelievable. Two weeks in a row. Um, that strike on the weekend, he couldn't have hit it better. It was um absolutely pure. So uh yeah, no, to come over here and in your first two weeks and have two golden point winners, it's uh, a great achievement and um it's sort of yeah, it's unbelievable, really. Getting back to Craven Park on Friday night, how much are you looking forward to that, given it it could potentially be quite a celebratory and party like atmosphere following getting to the Challenge Cup final? Yeah, no, it's um True, but I think for us, uh, looking at the Super League, it's from wait well, from first to eighth, but especially from third to eighth, it's um it's very tight. So uh, for us, um, it's a big game. We're sort of obviously we we we, we what happened on the weekend was awesome, but we've got um and it is quite a bit of a weird feeling. Um, personally, like obviously in the semi finals I've played for, you've gone semi final and you've all focus turns to the final. So it is kind of a, a bit of a weird feeling going. You've got you've got through the semi, but you've got to wait a couple of weeks. So um focus today has been all about cast. It's just um yeah, we're in a we're in a position now where we can sort of we need these two points as well. We're, it's the next couple of games, the next oh yeah, till the end of the season, it's gonna be a really tight finish. So it's a big game for us Friday night. As you say, given you've got those two weeks before you get to that Challenge Cup final, what else are you doing individually to try and mentally park it for the time being? Yeah, it's sort of coming today and we sort of reviewed the game, but after that it's it's park it and we've got we to gotta focus on casts. Obviously, it's a short turnaround for us. So um, they're in a position now where we're obviously they're going to be coming here to get the win. They're sort of in a bit of a battle themselves. So it's a, it's a big game for them. And as I said, it's a big game for us with the way the, the ladder sits. We sort of, if we want to cement ourselves in the top six, we've got to win games like Friday night. What's Willie Peter said to you as well about how he wants you to navigate the next fortnight? Yeah, it's just about, as I said, it's just about sort of reviewing the game today and 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 obviously taking all the positives out of it, but it's brushing it for, for the time being and um, really focusing on Cass. And we sort of, 
as I said, it's 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 quite a big game for us. Um, we sort of, if we want to play, be in the top six and playing finals at the end of the year, we sort of a game we need to win. Given how desperate Cass are as well with their own relegation troubles in Super League, how much will that, in a way, help you to avoid resting on your laurels and any kind of hangover from Sunday? Yeah, for sure. As I said, they're in a, they're they're coming here. They need the win. They're going to be desperate for the win. Obviously, they've had the week off, and as I guess I assume all their focus has been on about coming here and putting in a good performance and getting that win to sort of cement that like to. For, the, for their own personal battles. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a tough game and it's sort of one we're looking forward to. As you say, given that break, they've managed to get a number of players back from injury, made a, a few signings as well. How much does that change your preparations and change the dynamic of this game? Yeah, it doesn't change it too much. Obviously, that has a bit of personnel change around. So, um, there's obviously, obviously a couple of players that won't be playing um, Friday night that we might have thought they would be so that's obviously changed a little bit but um besides that it's it's we've obviously you play we played them early in the year it's just about sort of focusing on what we can control especially on short turnarounds I think you don't have a lot of time to focus on the opposition it's more about um making sure our focus is in the right spot and how we want to play and perform on Friday night I know Andy last after the Hull FC game spoke about how his side are lacking in a bit of resiliency at the moment how do you rattle them I suppose at Croven Park uh, for us, I guess it's just bring, about bringing a lot of energy. Um, I think we play our best when we're playing fast, energy, a lot of supports. We can sort of you can sort of see when we're when we're on, and I think that's a, the best way to sort of attack it. I think if we turn up with the right attitude and play fast and play with energy and get behind each other, I think um, that's probably the best way to go about it. Just finally, from me, just uh, just explain to us why a win against Cass on Friday night is so important, just to set yourselves up on the front foot for a, a big couple of weeks after that and a big couple of games yeah I think it's important it's important on two fronts I think obviously with the Challenge Cup it's important to get a bit, obviously we've had a good win on the weekend but you want to keep that momentum you want to keep that confidence going for the next couple of weeks so it's important on that front and obviously the league position where we're at um, with the top six being with the fight for the top six being so tight uh, we need to sort of we need to win the game really Matt thanks for your time no worries cheers Hi, Matt. You okay? Hey, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. I, I'm just wondering, are you the sort of um, of bloke who looks at the table every week, see how everyone's doing? You hear the coaches say, certainly this time of year, we're not looking at the table, albeit I don't know how truthful that is. Are you the sort that, that takes a look at it? Um, I think it depends how it's going. I think, like especially at the moment, I think... Um, everyone will sort of be looking at the table. You sort of look at the movements and who's playing who and and that kind of thing. It's sort of, um, when it's so tight, you obviously every week you sort of work out who, like obviously you can't control what the opposition, what other teams play, but you just sort of keep an eye on it and see where, where we're at. But when you get in these kinds of positions, we sort of, we sort of need to win games, you know what I mean? So if you um, you sort of you have one eye on it, I guess, but it's sort of focused on yourselves and con- control what you can control. It would be very easy for everyone to have one eye on Wembley and to, you know, let it let it become a distraction. Is it is it a collective responsibility between you as players to not allow yourselves as individuals and therefore wider as a group to let that happen? Because ultimately, you can't afford a couple of poor results in in Super League if you're going to make the top six at the minute. Yeah, exactly. We can't we can't afford it. And as I said, I think. Um... I think obviously it's it's a first for me. We're having a semi final and a bit of a break, but I think it's it's more about um, you want to get the result to, for your comp, like not for confidence, but just you want to go in there with everyone feeling good, playing well. I think um, over the next two weeks is about us and playing well, and I think so. It's, it kind of helps on two fronts. Obviously, we need these two wins for um, to keep our spot in the top six, but I think that helps with the confidence going into Wembley. I think if you put in some good performances. Um, before that, I think you'll have a lot more confidence and play well down there. And was that was that was that evident with the fact in the semi it came off a good performance against Leeds the week before? I know you struggled for form a bit before then, but yeah, was that, that, that performance really yeah, important. Yeah, we probably we had, like obviously prior to the Leeds game, we probably haven't been playing where we want to play, and I think that just one win like that can give the boys a bit of confidence. And you go into the game and you get to a golden point and you feel confident. You feel like, yeah, we've got this. We're going to do this. And it's sort of, so it's a bit of a flow on effect. And I think over these next two weeks, you don't want to be going into Wembley on the back of two poor performances and two losses. I think um, 
So obviously for the Super League, we need the win, but then for the, just for the team morale, you just want to keep that going and, and be positive going into Wembley. How, how important is it that energy is high on, um, you know, for, for the game? I mean, ultimately, they've had a bit more time off. You've not just had the physical demands of Golden Point, but the emotional ones as well. It, you do often see teams struggle for energy in games like this. How important is it that there is that? And how, how are you making sure that you will have that energy you need to, to win the game? Yeah, no, I think... Um... Yeah, that's true. You do see teams sometimes, but I think uh, I think purely just the way the cast the cast are going to turn up, they're going to be ready to go, and we know that they're in a they're in a, as I said they're in a bit of a fight themselves. So I think um, that just gets the boys refocused and energized, and you and you, you we're expecting the best version of cast to show up really. And I think um, when the best version of cast shows up, the best way for us to play them is with energy and playing fast and flat fast through the middle. I think um, that's kind of the best way we can. That's probably our best way of going about it. So it sort of works on the two fronts. Brilliant. Thanks, Matt. Cheers. Hi, Matt. It's Martin here from League Express. Hey, how are you? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. And congratulations on uh, on, on getting to Wembley. Great achievement. And it'll be interesting to compare Wembley and Old Trafford, won't it, when you get there and the different feeling from, from, from both games. Yeah, no, but, definitely. Um, just, just going back to, obviously... Going back to uh, to the weekend again, it, it, Brad Schneider. I mean, are you a bit surprised that Canberra released him to come on loan to Hull KR, given the way he's played this this last couple of weeks for you and his lethal boot? Oh, uh, I'm very grateful they did. I think uh, <laughs> I think uh, it's been uh yeah, but obviously it's it's I guess coming over here, it's just a bit of a I don't know I don't know personally to be how it was going to Canberra, but it can be just a, a bit of a freshen up. You come over here, you just get a bit of confidence. Um, play a bit of footy. It's, as I said, it's a, it's a good group of boys here. It's an awesome group of boys here and it's quite easy to fit in. And I think um, he's fit in really well. And um, yeah, just to do it two weeks in a row is uh, pretty pretty special. Yeah. And, and interestingly enough, of course, everybody focused on on the winning field goal. But just as crucial for me was that goal kick from touch after Ethan Ryan's try, because that brought you level, didn't it? After about six or three minutes, I think it was. And, you know, when you're on the pitch and you you were six points behind, Ethan goes in, makes it two points behind, and then Brad kicks that goal and it draws your level. That must have been a feeling of, that must have inspired confidence in the team as a whole, mustn't it? Because, you know, you could have still been two behind if he'd missed it. But when you draw level, you know, you, you know you're not then panicking to try and get level after that. So how, how did that feel at that point? No, definitely 100% right. I think um, that obviously the drop goal was awesome, but the the uh, conversion was, yeah, as you said, just as special. I think um, it's a tough kick, and I think that's uh, that's right from the sideline. Was sort of as this, the draw at level. Um, yeah, it was a is a big big play as well. He seems to have nerves of steel, does Brad? Doesn't he? If, uh, insofar as you can tell from the sidelines. Yeah, no, that's uh, and that's what you want. You want your half. You sort of you want as a half. You, you want someone who's is not afraid, who wants to step up and and uh, take the shot. I think is there's only you can only miss it if you take it kind of thing. So it's um it's you really want someone who uh, can step up and has a go. And can I just ask about you? I've spoken to you before about your rugby league family. You've got an incredible pedigree, of course. Um, sadly, your grandfather died two or three years ago, didn't he? Um, which was very sad. But I wonder whether your parents might be coming over to uh, to watch you at Wembley. Have you talked about it with them yet? Yeah, they're actually on a plane at the moment. Uh, but Are they right? uh, well, to be fair, um, obviously, pri not including COVID, we always planned it so they'd come over for this week. Oh, not this week for Wembley week, and uh, we'd all, with the hope that we'd always make it. And um, been to a few semi-finals and missed, just missed out. So uh, finally, uh, it's aligned, and yeah, they're on their way over, so they'll be there at Wembley, which is awesome. Well, you put in an extra five percent at the weekend just just for that, did you? Yeah, no, yeah. So it's been um, a couple of times I thought I would go on, and it hasn't worked out. So this time it's great. Just one thing: when one of the patterns of of teams getting to Wembley, when when it's you know two or three weeks um, between the semi final and the final, it's often very tempting for a side to relax a bit, and well, not so much relax, but to be a good, bit cautious. Nobody wants to get injured before 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 Wembley, of course. That would be incredibly sad for anybody individually um and yet they always say don't they if you play trying to avoid injury it's the best way to get injured yeah. so i suppose that's the message isn't it for the next couple of weeks don't 
don't pull back don't don't try and go for too much self-preservation just put everything into these next two games and hopefully they'll take care of themselves yeah 100 percent. i think um especially in this sport there's you just can't control it sometimes so if you go in there with the back of your, with the, at your back of your mind i think it's probably the yeah as you said it's probably the best way to get injured so you just got to go out there and um when you're on the field you just play as you normally play and whatever happens happens but as you said um Everyone wants to play and not get injured, but it's just nothing you control. You go out there, do your best and, and see what happens. Okay, mate, and good luck uh, on Friday night. Thanks, Mark. Good to speak Thanks. to you again. Thank you. Cheers, bye. Hey, Mark, you all right, mate? Hey, how are you? Um, yeah, I'm good, thanks, I'm Good, thanks. Um, I was just wanting to wonder as well, um, when you've been in Super League like before with Leeds and obviously in your first couple of seasons at KR, you've kind of been like... Um, almost like an 80-minute hooker. How are you finding the split role now with Jez? Because, I mean, I remember specifically the Wigan game that you, we lost at Golden Point at Craven Park. When you came on, you injected so much sort of pace into the game. Are you kind of growing into that role? Do you prefer it or would you would you rather be out there for a full 80? Um, to be honest, it's completely up to Willie. I'll just go out and do the absolute best I can while I'm out there. As you said, I think um, in the past, Jezza and I have probably been on the field a bit more together. Um, we still are in in stages at like presently, but probably more consistently, we were both on at the same time. So the way Willie wants to do it, it's sort of um, more have one hooker on at once and then sometimes have both of us. But uh, yeah, with Jezza's awesome player, unbelievable player. So it's just about whatever's best for the team, whatever's best for Willie, well, whatever Willie decides really. So, um, but I just go out there and do my best. I think like, to be fair, like times like that, when, when you're coming on after that 25 minute mark sort of thing, it's not a bad time to come on. It sort of stings a little bit out of the game and you can come on and, and play, um, play some footy. So it's whatever way. If I play 80 minutes, I play 80 minutes. If I play 50 minutes, I play 50. It's just go out there and do my best. Yeah. I mean, and you've been around some like brilliant players, but, you just alluded to there the fact Jez is really obviously got the England call up earlier this season. What sort of, without putting too much pressure on, what sort of projections do you put for his future? Like where, where can he go? Yeah, that is, um, is as I said, he's unbelievable. He should um have some very high goals. He's obviously um I think he, the big focus with that England call up is to become the England number nine. I think in the future, I think um. There's probably a bit of a vacant spot at the moment. Over the next few years, it might be a competition between a few of the guys, but uh, he's definitely got, if he continues on the trajectory, he's um, definitely got a good shot at being the England number nine.